On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, we have a magic number for this episode, and that number is three. We have the top three cup teams for the Avalanche, the top three trades in their history, and the top three moments in Colorado Avalanche history as well. All new episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me as always is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're tuned into our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche. On Twitter, X, Locked On Avalanche, Instagram, and threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. Make sure you subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, chat with Kyle and I one on one. We get your opinion, everything Avalanche related to which we share on this wonderful podcast here covering the Colorado Avalanche. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing uh, top three categories or or polls or what no what do we call them top three lists i think yes yes so um we figured you know you got the off season another season's in the book so let's go back and look at the history of the colorado avalanche in terms of the three cups that they won the the our top three trades that they had made and moments and now i, I do want to preface this by saying like not with the exception of the, of the cups but with the trades and the moments um, there's a lot to go from. So if we didn't include what doesn't mean it didn't matter. It's just it's, cause I'm really interested to see what your trades are. I have a feeling I know what your number one trade is, oh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but like I got one in there that not, it's it not, well, we'll talk about it, but yeah, I know it, there's other ones that people have. It, it doesn't mean there's any less. It's just, that's why I love doing these. Everybody has their preference. And and when this was pitched, I I went. This is all personal, and I can mm-hmm. I can argue anybody any day about these. And when you hear the explanation behind it, you'll understand why it ranks where it does. But it does when you view it this way. These cups, these moves, these just everything. When it comes yeah. to these top three lists, there's a lot of personal under under, I guess, growth when it comes to these lists. Okay. So it makes sense, and it's it's something that we can all relate to, even if it's not the overarching number one. But don't say argue, because I don't I don't like that word. Like we all have an opinion on this, and I don't want to argue with someone's opinion on it. If they if they feel like there is a trade that's from totally left or a moment, you know that that's personal to them. I'm not going to say like you're wrong, but yeah, there like, is no wrong answer. In yeah, any of this. There's, there's really not, and it's more of discussion than really like argument. So, um, we figured why not start with the cups? The Avalanche have three of them: um, the uh, 96, 01, and 22. And I, I think this is one where you could, again, I could I could have the the discussion with somebody of however you have this ranked. I'd probably be okay with you can make an argument for either one of these three being your top one. And I think some of it might be dependent on when you were born. Yeah. Cause if you, if you were born in 2000 and you were a year old when they won their first one, you don't remember that one, but you were 20 years old when they won their first, that one is obviously going to hold more weight for you personally. But, and, and, you know, even when you grow up and you, 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 are in your 20s or now and and or even if you're in your 30s um you do know the history so maybe if you didn't live it you still know the importance of it and and for the three cups for the abs like we said that the, we'll just kind of go through these and then and then uh radars list ours uh the 95 96 one was obviously their first year in colorado when they moved from quebec uh their record that year 47 25 and 10 that's 104 points Um, they were first in the Pacific in the playoffs. They, the conference quarterfinals four to two over Vancouver in the semis four to two over Chicago in the conference finals four to two over Detroit, and then swept the Florida Panthers four to nothing. Um, really just had no, I mean, I know they won in overtime in, in that, uh, Florida Panthers series, but really kind of stuck it to them. 
The 0001 abs, 52, 16, 10, and 4. That's when we just had constant numbers in your uh, standings. 118 points. That was uh, first in the Northwest Division at the time. For the playoffs in the quarterfinals, uh, 4 0 um, sweep over Vancouver, 4 to 3 uh, semifinal over the Los Angeles Kings, which to this day is one of the best series that I, I can yeah. remember. That, that series was incredible um conference finals four to one over the blues and then the epic four to three seven game series against the new jersey devils when they were down three games to two and then won the last two to win the whole thing that was epic and then the most recent one 21 22 56 19 and 7 119 points which is uh, uh now a franchise record first in the central um and then an epic run in the playoffs and that's where you could say hey this kid this is my number one Four to nothing against Nashville, four to two against St. Louis, four to nothing against Edmonton, and then obviously four to two over Tampa. So a lot to go on on each of these, but you know, just a broad spectrum view. What's your take on these? And see, and that's the wonderful thing about these. You pick each one of these, and it's it's special for a different reason. Like okay. the '96 Cup, like it's a proof, especially like if you're much older and you witnessed hockey in the Denver area at this time, it's a proof of concept that, one, hockey works here, two, successful hockey can work here, and three, you could support hockey. Like, you've been through the Rockies. You've been through – there's a lot of just average to bad hockey that has come through the Denver area. And to have the Quebec Nordiques come into town, rebrand, call Denver home, and make McNichols a place to be – that that means a lot and to sweep the florida panthers when they had all the hype the rat trick stuff and to win that super special moment for denver yeah i mean like i said it's your first year there I and mean, that that usually doesn't usually when a team is moving it's because they're a bad team and and you know and they were not um they just didn't have the finances to, to stay in, in Quebec. So that was part of the, the move, why they had to make the move. And then you go out and win the Stanley Cup. You trade for Patrick Waugh, which I'm sure we'll get to a little bit later. Um, so that, you know, that 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 just set a tone yeah. for for the area and this franchise of, you know, we're here and we got a cup in our pocket on year one. And then you go to the 2000-2001. The that team was just loaded loaded and then and then obviously what's always synonymous with that one is the ray bork mm. move you bring him in he finally gets a cup saka hands it to him and that moment is just etched in the minds of hockey fans not even avalanche fans hockey fans and we say it all the time like when the playoffs come around and they're doing promos that's always a part of the promo and it will be forever because it, it's it's just one of the epic moments. So you got that, and then obviously with this last one, after a a big break, twenty plus years of not getting one, and that was a well put together team, top to bottom. And you had Nathan McKinnon finally winning one. Kale McCarr, the young guy, just adds already to the list of all the accolades and everything that he has done. Uh, Eric Johnson getting it. It was kind of like Ray Bork two point oh, with uh, Landis Scott handing him the cup. Just all three i mean championships are always special there's yeah. not one that someone wins it like uh ho hum whatever um but all three of these had uh there there are things that you can hang your hat on to say like this is why that team was so special and magical moments and you go back and look at each one of these and you're like i don't know if i appreciated this enough in the time even 2022 i don't know if i gave this the appreciation for the moment when you look at the rosters, everything they went through to get there. And there, there is some incredible moments and it, that, that comes into my rankings as well on mm -hmm. the moments that surround this and each one of these cups, which are ever so special, each individual one. And as we're talking about this, you know, I'm thinking of, and, then, and then we'll give our rankings for these um, all three of the championships for the abs. They were, they were first in their division um or first in the conference so they've never had to kind of like go through a playoff that they've won where they they have to like battle through it of being like a wild card or something like that and i'm not saying like that's what i want but uh the the three teams that won were just 
really three like pretty dominant teams. And three so and own cup appearances too. Exactly. They make the cup and then you pretty much give it to them. So what do you have these ranked as, sir? Between these through, go three to one, and then we'll throw out mine as well. Number three is 96. It's yep. I I, I would agree with you. And again, I don't I don't want to minimize 96. No. I don't want to say like, oh, it means nothing, throw it away. No, like uh, I, I'm with you. But why why do you have them at, at three? Well, three because the gravity of one and two and three honestly that's the year i became an avalanche fan like mm -hmm. and it was just hype supreme like you were this is magical like this team is something else and they get wah like it, a good team that came to denver and got better and won the cup in commanding fashion like 96 even though it's third it should it's way up there in all time moments yeah i think like that if that happened to another franchise moving there winning it in your first season um that would probably be number one on almost anybody's list i'm not trying to sound like my, like my nose is in the air when saying like that's third for us but just because the other two uh there's just a little bit more gravity to them i feel um 96 was just it's like a disney movie yeah just everything about it was just awesome um where you know and well what's your second is is well, 2022 yeah so we have the same exact three two and one and honestly it's 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 right there because 2022 we got through the dark times all the hype of 96 and 01 there was a long stretch in between where it was very dark very bad people were demanding trades out the what you thought was going to be the future left and then you finally won in 2022 it was a beautiful moment it i I will never forget that moment, and it's it's up there personally as an all time number one, but it's number two when it comes to importance for me. Yeah, because you, when you win um, five years apart from each other, um, and then you go twenty years without winning it, um, you do you go through some dark times, yep. and there definitely were some in those twenty plus years. Um, and then to finally come out on the other and finally break through all the, those those consecutive years of losing in the second round. And it's like, are they ever going to get out of the second round? Which I don't buy into that <clears throat> superstition stuff. But, um, you know, there were questions, even though they had a good team and they had good players. It was like, can, can they be that really good regular season team and not break through? And, and they finally did. And, um, yeah, then you have the Eric Johnson moment which is, you know, it's just fantastic. So I'm with you on that. And I, and I think for me, it is the the length of time between the two championships, which just made it that much sweeter. Yep. And and number one, obviously, we're in agreement on that. Oh, one, is it just the Ray Bork thing or is it just the team was loaded? Oh, it was, it was so much more. It took me from Avalanche fan to fanatic to where I am, honestly, today. It's not just the Ray Bork moment. Game seven, seven games, Stanley Cup. Seven games That's awesome. pretty epic. Avs, Devils, Wa, Rodor. Look at the top two when it comes to goalies. You got those names sitting right there. It's mm -hmm. look at the roster, the path the Avalanche had to take to get to that 01 Cup. Look at those rosters and look at the Hall of Famers that are sitting on those teams. Like the Avalanche had to go through a grind and then do a seven game series with an incredible New Jersey Devils team. Like that 01 Cup, everything about it was just literally. A movie it was beautiful it was and, and <clears throat> the culmination was the moment of, the moment of ray bork getting that that cup so um let's see uh let's get our first break in but definitely comment away in the in the comment section because i i want to know what what each cup meant for, to each person like i said is the age thing in is that come into account for you as way me why you put the 22 team at number one so um Let's hear it. All right. We're going to get our first break in. When we come back, we'll discuss our top three trades that the Avalanche have made over the years. We'll do that right after this. Let's hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. With superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, we always call that what, sir? Another powerful three 
the Nathan McKinnon trilogy. There you go. eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home the win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. <clears throat> Exclusions apply. And eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right. Moving on uh, with our top three lists, we are going to get into trades now. And again, like I said in the beginning, there's <clears throat> there's a lot. Mm -hmm. to go off with trades um and we did not converse before we started this because i kind of like to be like surprised when we say whatever we're going to come out with i have a feeling of who you know who your number one is but i don't know who and maybe i'm completely wrong on this you've surprised me in the past so start at number three give me your third patrick law at three there, well, Good. wow. Okay. Well, number okay. one is also big. Number two is also big. But three, there would be no Colorado Avalanche. There would be no first segment if there was no trade number three. And that'd be Patrick Wall. <laughs> okay. I guess I will do this. I'll get your top three. If any overlap with mine, just so we don't talk about it twice, I'll throw it out there. That's my number one. Interesting. <laughs> I, I can't I like that. I mean, you are bringing you brought in. The greatest goalie of all time, yeah, right. Like th that's like the the Kings bringing in Gretzky, the greatest player of all time. This is you brought in the greatest goalie of all time, and th again, going back to what we talked in in the first segment was you just got there, you just got to Colorado. The season is 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 the, the paint hasn't even dried on this year, and you bring that him in. It was like the first week of December you brought him in. Um, that just set the tone. For we are not messing around. We're going after this thing in year one. We're not, we're not in, in honeymoon land right now just because we move and you know we don't have to do anything and people will show up. They're happy we're here. But no, that was we are doing this. And that put a stamp on on what this team was doing in the early years. The ultimate what if, if you try and go back and paint Colorado Avalanche right. history without that name, even in coaching, what would this team look like today? It's incredible what that one move did for the trajectory of this Colorado Avalanche franchise. And I think there's a lot of people out there right now saying like, we want that now. Yeah. Like that team, that team could score. I still have this stuff up. Um, what they have goals for 326, which was second in the league that year that they, that they um, went to Colorado. So they could score. And now you got the best goalie in the world in that. I think there's a lot of people now saying like, can, can we get a little bit of that, <laughs> that <laughs> right would be now? Because nice. we have that, we have the scoring. Um, so, all right. But that, that's, that I'm surprised you got Watt three. I thought you'd have Watt two Cause I thought I, like I said, I think I know who your number one is, but what is your number two, sir? What do you think? Number one is really, okay. I have the Nas and Tyson Berry trade at two. Mm -hmm. I know everybody's like, Oh, he's just doing this. Cause it's Nas. No, this was the piece that helped 2022 happen. This is after all the dark times, all the pieces going out, players demanding to get traded. Ryan O'Reilly, Matt Duchesne, they're out. And then guess what? Well, Tyson Berry's out too. And you're bringing in Nas. Grit, grindy, gets you some points, more points than we were expecting, honestly. But mm -hmm. that was the piece that helped get the avalanche out of the basement. Made them feel like a real contender. Like well, made them feel legit. Like the abs were putting things together admittedly homegrown like everybody that we talk about night in night out on the show nathan mckinnon gabe lannis got miko ranting kill mccarr we went out and got those guys they drafted them that's homegrown they, they didn't piece together somebody's project that's the core of the avalanche is what they went out and got <laughs> but then you go get Nas, and he added just an extra level of legitimacy and he went out there and commanded it and this team rallied around him and that was one of the big pieces for the 2022 cup. Yeah. And, and I mean, it took him, you know, uh, a little while to get to what he did in the 21, 22 season. So I, I would say like, you know, 
getting him when they got him, you know, yeah, he slotted in nice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was giving you what you want out of a second line center and then just went into overdrive Mm -hmm. in 21-22. There's a massive reason why they won that cup. So, yeah, you can now look back on it in his tenure in Colorado and say, like, yeah, that that was a huge trade because the end result of it, the lasting impression of Nazem Kadri on the avalanche is winning a cup. And they're still so, chasing it now. It, well, yeah, they are. And, you know, we're, we're all, you know, kind of high on Casey Middlestat, but it's been however many years since Kadri's left. And have they just figured out? We, we hope that they figured out the 2C situation and we think that they have, but it's still got to play out. So, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's a good one. It's definitely it's, a good one. It's no longer 2C. It's the Nas replacement, even still. Casey Milstead, when was. articles are written about the Avs, it's who can replace Nas's production. That's how it was with Rijo. Everybody that slots in, it's always replacing Nas, who hasn't been here in quite some time. It's kind of like, you know, uh, when Elway left. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, even when Manning retired. Like you know, you're still trying to find the the that guy to take the helm. You're still trying to find the guy who's the two C. You think you got it? We'll see. Remains to be seen. Um. All right. What's your number one? Lindros and everybody. Oh uh, well. So well. Are we then we're going back to, to Quebec. I didn't know we were going but, back to Quebec. But <clears throat> even if you do that, you're you're getting Forsberg. What the Avalanche got in mm-hmm. this was right at the turn. This is. Yeah, it was early. I mean, it was a few years early, it's but foundational. Yeah, okay. And it's, you threw it's me one, for a loop. I didn't know we were going to Nordiques. I didn't know we were going back back. It's to the one homeland. of those All that right. it, it's right at the turn. What if you're if you're including that? It, it it's 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 at the top. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, like I I honestly, you cannot look at this Avalanche roster. I know it's going back to Nordiques a little bit, but oh, it is so much of everything around wa came through this trade and was built and could push everything we're talking about could be traced back to that you can't Mm -hmm. like i know it's kind of blending a little bit but you can't have this avalanche team take out those members of that trade and then try and talk about 96 being a great year there's a lot of pieces that helped 96 happen in that trade. And sure, I know it's sure. kind of fudging right. things a little bit, but right. when yeah. you look at the lasting impression of that move, it has to go oh, with Lindros. Huge. It's massive. It, 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 it was, yeah, it was a haul. If um, you have not watched the trade tree video, the mm-hmm. Steve Dangle tree, trade tree video of that trade, I highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, th- those videos are just fun anyway. Uh, but just to see how long it went and benefited the Nordique slash Avalanche is, is, you know, you could go back and just be like, hey, uh, Lindros for Forsberg, one for one would have been enough. Yeah, <laughs> really would have been. But what they got in addition to that was just it was a haul. So I think the trade tree ended two years ago on that. Wouldn't surprise me. The Wouldn't the pieces surprise, yeah. that were falling out of that trade. That's the why Gretzky one. Up. The Gretzky one just ended last year. Yeah. Can you believe that? Last year, and I don't remember who the guy was, but uh last year it ended. Yeah, when you that's when good. you have <clears throat> trade pieces that are still happening because of that trade, that's it's I know it's kind of blending the line, but when you have yeah. a tree that goes that long into Avalanche history, right? It's it's kind of foundational. So there's two in there that you didn't have that I have in my top three. I have Watt number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, at number two, I have the Matt Duchesne trade. Just massive. Yeah. Huge, huge trade. And um, it was just methodical on how Patrick Watt said, like, okay, like I, we, we hear you. You want to trade out of here. We're not doing so hot. Kind of sucks. You don't want to be a part of a, a rebuild here, but fine. But you need to be patient. I'm not just flipping you the first, you know, uh, deal that is thrown my way. And it was a long drawn out process. And Boy. what they got in return for, for him was a, a King's a ransom, cup. really a Stanley cup, a Stanley cup at the end. Yeah. So, um, that I thought was a huge deal. And for my number third, number third, is that even what, what it is now it is it's now Friday. Canon. It's Friday. Yeah. Uh, for the third one for me, Claude Lemieux. Ooh, that is a good one. 
you get Claude again. Claude Lemieux yeah. is someone that just came in here year one um, and brought your grit, obviously. You know, he, he wasn't backing down from anybody. But and I'm not condoning the hit on Chris Draper, but you don't have the the Avs Red Wings likely rivalry if not for Claude Lemieux. Yeah, you're right. So no. and it kind of be, began with getting him, and people kind of say like the 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 Avs Red Wings rivalry ended when they were well, not released him got got rid of him traded yeah. him I think back to to New Jersey, um, and that was in between that was a rivalry that is one of the best in sports history. So that's why I'd put Claude Lemieux as the third trade. Yeah, no no wrong answers in the six. No, you can, you know, you. I'm sure there's people that love the Rob, uh, the Rob Blake trade. Oh, yeah. Obviously the Bork trade. Um, oh, Taves. Taves was another one I put down. I think it's a little early for that, but, st- I mean, that was a great trade. Two second-round picks for, you know, one of the best defenders in the league. Sure. So. And- Jury's still out on the Bowen Byron trade. That might be one we revisit in a few yep. years. You might be able to throw that one into the mix. So, um, all right, let's get our last break in here and we come back. Our top three moments from Avalanche history. What could those be? We'll do that next. All right, let's hear from FanDuel <clears throat> because we love sports and we love them so much that we never want them to stop. The playoffs are all over in the NBA and the NHL. We do have Major League Baseball. We do have the Olympics, but that's just a short amount of time. Two weeks and they're done. So we get fewer and fewer games. The sports are not sportsing like we want them to, are they, Mr. Sullivan? No, they're they're just, eh. They can't sports like they do. Uh, But FanDuel lets us keep the sports going whenever we want. And all we have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that we're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus daily. So it's right. You can get something for everyone every day, all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel. It's the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, time for moments. And this is another one. This, the list is long. So uh, like, like we've been saying this whole episode, no wrong answers here. So uh, where would you go with this? Where would you start with uh, moments for the abs? And again, this is personal to me. Yep. Number three, the alumni game between the Avalanche Ooh. and the Detroit Red Wings. Oh, really? It, it's it's literally getting the band back together, all of your heroes, one more time. It's mm-hmm. honestly, it's the first time I had to find it, the stream of that game illegally because it was not available. <laughs> this is back when I was living in Alabama. It mm-hmm. was hard to find that game. And I sat down with my two young children at the time and I explained how important these people were to me. And it was just a beautiful moment. I don't even care about the outcome or what happened. Just seeing my heroes on the ice one more time. It was a big, a big deal all around. It was the first outdoor game for the abs. Um, I remember every single morning, like I, I just I wanted to know what those jerseys were going to look like. Yeah. Every day, like, when is it going to be? When is it going to be? be? And the game itself, uh, not the alumni game, but the game itself was on my birthday, which they lost, but whatever. But, yeah, and then when they announced, like, that was going to be the, the alumni game, and it was just nice to see, like, that – I mean, we talked about it, just that that rivalry between those two. All those guys are older now, and, you know, that, that's, that's hockey. And coming together in that – you know, on that field, at course field, it was there. That that was a that was a pretty cool moment. I agree with yeah. I, I yeah. agree with that. Yep. Keep going. What's your other ones? No, it ranks number two. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be higher on your list. Game eighty two against the Blues. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that that's on my list. Uh, yeah. To this day, I mean, it, again, like sure, that's a big moment, and people can put other ones like uh, above that. But, dude, like, uh, every once in a while, I'll go back and just watch that clip on YouTube. I, w- I do the exact same thing. Just the the celebration, everything. The year before, the, the to that point, the, the worst record in history. Um, and then the very next year, you know, Patrick Waugh leaves, um, you know, and, and then you get uh, Jared Bednar and, you know, you you – do that you have a turnaround like that 
Um, and it was all or nothing. Whoever won that game was going to the playoffs. And it was on home ice. And when Landis Scog flung that open net and it just Miko Ranton and just jumping on top of the pile, it was, it was phenomenal. There was nothing, <laughs> very few things better than that. And I go back and I, I, I tear up every time now hearing Maxi on the call too. Oh, so good. Yeah, everything, good. everything about that was awesome. Yeah, I, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful moment. What else you got? What's your last one? My number one all time, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't rank number one in cups, the 2022 mm -hmm. cup, because I got to witness that with my children. We had our own Stanley Cup parade. Um, <laughs> and it was honestly, again, dark times. Like you didn't know if the avalanche would ever get back to that. You're you didn't want to be that always pointing back to 96 and 01 for the rest of your life mm -hmm. it, and winning that cup, the elation, the just feeling that having that feeling again, after going through such like the dark times, like you mentioned, going into game 82, you and always just climbing a little bit, staying stuck in that second round forever, all of it paying off. And I I'm telling you, I've wept at the yeah. conclusion of that game. It was just an emotional all-time moment that I got to witness as an adult and a father. Yeah. And I don't think I'll ever forget that. I mean, it, it's a good moment because they win the cup, but like you're saying, like that's a personal thing. What it meant to you and you get to share it with like your kids and stuff like that, right? Yeah, that's that's awesome. It's, Can't beat it. It's it's hard to describe. Yeah. Um, for me, I I had the the Blues moment beating the the. St. Louis on here three times <laughs> that was not, because I didn't put the Bork thing on there. Like, because that, that's just, that, that's an epic moment. That's an yeah. all time moment. Um, I was, I was close to putting the Kale McCarr first goal on there. Oh yeah. Cause that was a great moment, but I went with the, the, <laughs> the blues getting beat or, you know, with the one we just talked about the, the Nazem Kadri hat trick. Yes. Against the blues. And, all of the hatred he was getting and just the, you know, the, the tone that was directed towards him towards the worst of the worst when it comes to fans um, and to turn around and lay a hat trick on them was beautiful. Like I, I, I would have loved to know the feeling that he felt you saw it. Yeah. But when he got that third goal and he kind of just, you know, does the tip of the hat, like what, what was going on in his, his body then? Good Lord. That must've been, I mean, professionally. Yeah. He won the cup, but like, you know, outside of your profession, your kids being born and everything is, is your greatest moment, but on the ice and outside of like winning the cup, that is, that had to be just an unbelievable moment for him on their ice doing it as well. And you had the whole stand with Nas back at, you know, ball arena. That that whole thing was just incredible. incredible. Yeah, it, it was it was such an incredible moment. And I it was an honorable mention for me. I I truly yeah. I had it right there, but I can't have Nas twice on my list. So no, yeah, no, it, it's I absolutely agree with you. Well, and then the last one is, is the Darren Helm one. Oh, yeah. The Darren Helm. Five seconds left off the boards. The pass from Eric Johnson just rips it right off the boards. And that gets the avalanche out of that second round, which so many people were like, oh, they can't get out of the second round. And they do it in that fashion. Uh, like it was just so unexpected. You're just thinking, like, oh, this thing's going to overtime. And that's why you play till it says all zeros on the on the scoreboard. And man, that that was like uh, if, if you could if I could go back and like try to re-experience something, this was like a my my Avengers Endgame portals scene of going back and wishing I could like experience that because yeah. I almost blew my knee out because I jumped up and I nailed it on my coffee table that was in front of me. I was watching, but I felt no pain at that moment because it was just like, oh my, like what did that just happen? You're like watching the screen just to make sure all of that happened. And the, the puck actually did go in just like the one that the, the overtime one, where you know the oh, Peter McNabb, like it did go in, like that yeah. was another one where, like, please say that it went in. But that Darren Helm one was just epic. Oh, and epic. you just felt weight come off of you. You knew yeah. this team was destined for something. That yeah. was it was just magical, unlikely hero. It was it was beautiful. So good. 
So uh, let's uh, see the comment section because I, I love seeing moments. Because I and like you said, like I know the twenty two moment was a big moment, but like because you sh shared it with your kids, like I like hearing stuff like that. There could be just like this menial moment in Avalanche history that just meant something to somebody because they got to share it with a parent or something like that. So if anybody's got those stories, definitely throw them out in the comments because I love hearing stuff like that. Yeah, like I almost had the Nashville nine spot as an honorable mention because that was really? one of the most fun hockey games that yeah. people still point back to, like how much fun it was scoring that much and that often. Yeah. And you yeah. were like, oh, we're getting a 10. We still point at that game many times. Yeah. Yep. So uh, throw them out in the comments section. So, um, but for that right now, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode and for this week. So thank you everybody for tuning in and making this your first listen today and every day. That is always appreciated. So enjoy your weekend. We'll be back next week and we are another, we are into August, sir. So we got to get through August and then it's right around the corner. The hall of fame game was on as we were recording this which means football is almost here, which means hockey is almost here, which is so much better than football. So we're getting there. We're getting the there. August rush. Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week.